All right, and here we go. We're coming back, bam, um, for the third and final hour, because this is a three-hour stream, because, you know, we all do we all do lots of stuff in our, in our lives, and, and they can't give me more hours. They can't. Ollie was like, listen, listen, bro. I, I, it's beyond three hours, it's too much D and D in my life. I'll explode. Yeah, I can't, I can't uh, stay up past five a.m. And we all know, being being British, he says "bro" very, very often. So British, awesome. yeah. All right. Always off camera, but so. Yeah, yeah. Always, always off, always off camera. I'm trying a new beer actually, because I was like, oh, I need to get a drink, and I looked at my fridge and I realized I had zero beer aside from this. It's a. Uh, this ain't your mama's apple pie. It's not not your mama's what? apple pie. And I'm like, oh god, what? that's not beer. That's... Oh, oh, trust me, William. You don't need to describe to me what beer is. It's hard not, either. I'm just like, <laughs> I've never even I've never even drank in that, but I just know that's not beer. So, well, I'm trying to like it. Trying it for like my first food. time ever. Um, and it, it it is correct. This is not your mother's apple pie. This is this is not. He's he's not getting paid by these people, folks. No. I promise you. <laughs> no, I am. If you want to uh, sponsor us, uh, not your mama's apple pie. <laughs> yeah, we'll say so much. Email me. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this is delicious. I mean, uh, from the from the sexy lady on the bottle to the smooth flavor going down, not your mama's apple pie. All right, <laughs> enough of this garbage. <laughs> All right, so um, you guys find yourselves in that tavern next door. Um, you've probably got like a solid half an hour to chat before you have to worry about her coming out and, you know, I guess if you care to bump into her again. Well, I assume we must have told like an orderly <laughs> to go get us if something, if she went really badly or really well. Sure, sure. Yeah. You want to tell an orderly to do that? Are you willing yeah. to pay for yeah. it? <laughs> no, I'm going to. Uh, Stalbor assumes that they have honor in their job. One of them might have to pay after I like say that and, and walk past them. Um, so uh, okay, and so he does exactly that. I offer to pay. <laughs> okay, and Aaron, that's only going to cost you like five silver, so you're good to five go with that. Fine. And you let them know we'll just be at whatever taverns. We're going to walk to the left, whatever first mm -hmm. tavern is. So you just go walking into the place. It's mediocre. It's not not noteworthy, positive, negative, or otherwise. You're in the tavern. You find that spot. Sadly, it's somewhat in the middle of the room, but it's your own table to yourselves, and it doesn't seem like anybody's listening to you or anything, anything stupid like that. So, proceed with your conversation. Um, I imagine, as everybody kind of sits down, one of you guys, Luca or otherwise, orders that first round of drinks to make sure that there's drinks on the table. Um, yes. And then we'll start with conversation after everybody gets their first round. If you care to, before you speak the first time, say what you're drinking. If you don't care to, then don't. Go ahead. It's whatever wine is probably the, the wine on tap, so not good wine. <laughs> on tap, nice. Bad wine. Yeah. I, I physically I... cringe at his drink choice. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I order an ale. Mm -hmm. An ale for me, and I order um, a whiskey for Reich simply because that's what I've known he's drinking so far. Mm -hmm. I don't when order anything. Order me well, the whole time we've been like traveling back here and like talking to people, I've like visibly been like avoiding your eye. And though my character tries to make it seem like he's just uh, being like a like a gruff person, I have a minus one deception, so it's very easy to see that I am visibly like. You a guys are not very subtle in your no. emotional. <laughs> That's not my job, man. Don't see, make so me like that. My character wouldn't even like. I realized that you grabbed the arrow and you then i went down it. but i i honestly don't know what I'm like the I, one knows. right like yeah. something grabbed an arrow out of me and i went down because of pain i don't necessarily know if i've seen you do it so i don't even i'm kind of looking at like yeah you're looking at me like oh i don't want to make eye contact and i'm kind of just like here have a whiskey like <laughs> who are you attacking ollie <laughs> i uh, just realized this is wrong and i uh swank. uh Whoops. Well, it, it should know that it's wrong, um, but it doesn't. Ah, oh, well. Oh, there we go. He's obviously so attacking whoops. no one. You know, it was... I've never been a player before, okay? <laughs> Get off my back. Uh, when when the, the drinks arrive, I say... Uh, I Do any of you know Elvish? 
No. Then uh, I I say something in Elvish to to Luca, but like sort of like a, as a throwaway. So it's not like something meaningful. It's like probably thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, your if your body language says thank you and yeah. you say Elvish, I'll just kind of like nod and, and and hold my my drink up to yours. Like yeah, sure. What you say, yeah. And I take a sip, <laughs> and I'll 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 say so. Maybe we should discuss what just happened. Mm. By the way, Luca, and I'll like point to myself. It's me. Hi. You're catching on quickly. I will order a nice wine for myself. Nothing ridiculous, but I will inquire into what they have and pick something from one of my, like, not favorite vineyards, but one of the more tolerable ones. Mm -hmm. I imagine we're in Breland, but it's, it's Sharn, so. Awesome. They might have a good selection. Okay, <laughs> they do. Okay. And I will introduce myself, and I will say, Odette. Odette Dale Ryan. F figure that. Yes. What does that it's mean? A, it's a little on the nose. Uh, Orion is my house name. They are a dragon marked house. That is not so unique to Corvair, but certainly more common here than I imagine out where you are. I'll, I'll just whisper to Ollie, taxi drivers. But like, no. so she, no, I whisper it. Okay. I whisper it. Um, where are you from? Are, are there dragon marked elves? The Ur and I perhaps? traditionally distrust the dragon marked house. I've yet to make my choice. Well, here uh, we have more dragon marked houses rather than just the, the elvish mark of shadow. Um, my house, House Orion, manifests the mark of passage. His is mark of Sentinel. Sentinel. There you go. I was trying which to help I, you out. Which I, of course, knew. <laughs> okay. Oh, so you guys... Wait, wait, you guys so neither one of us have yeah, a draft mark. You guys came yeah. in here to have a discussion about uh, what you're going to talk about, how much you're going to tell her, so on and so forth. So, uh, kicking off that conversation, um, what, what have you guys got in that conversation? Got, uh, some of the names... Uh, yeah, well, a after there's like a long point of Sorry, silence, my character would just say... Right. Oh, I would sip from his whiskey. A hot Solid. goblin. Are you from Droam? Oh. I look. Or... I glare at you and I say, "Dargun." Oh. Dargun. Okay. Names large... are important. There's a large hobgoblin population in Drom. But yes, there was a very deliberately staged attack and I of course know little of the politics of this side of the world but I can tell when something is wrong I'm very good at that yes oh so yeah Luca would nod to that and say but I'm curious very curious as to why this attack even occurred and I'll, I'll look toward both Reich and then toward our debt. If, the houses uh, have enemies. Um, could have been an attack on, o on Kenneth or Orion. Um, I don't necessarily trust where Del De Leander got his information from, but I don't see how he could have meant us any ill will by giving us this information. As so, much as it pains me to say anything good about that man. Huh. Uh, he uh, may be trying to use this to gain credit and fame. Of course. I'll, I'll agree to Audette and say I don't think he is intelligent enough to have this be a way to prosper himself. Um, maybe he thinks he can. However... I don't think he was doing anything other than trying to be good, maybe, for once. I wouldn't put, a, put anything past him or that house. Wow. 
Yeah. So I'll, I'll not, I'll just like, kind of like, okay, that your, your beliefs are your beliefs. Um, I don't say that, but you could just kind of like see it on mm-hmm. me and, uh, I'll say, but what should we tell the person who is attacked? Should we let them know that he gave us this information? I, I don't think we should. Why wouldn't we? What reason do we have to hide it? I think we should find out what he wants first. Why? I think we should find out who ordered the attack first. Do we have any leads? Some of the hobgoblins or goblinoids live. You speak their language. Indeed. They know that we helped. Those guards will vouch for us. We should be allowed into whatever place they keep their prisoners, unless they intend on killing them. I have tried to stay away from having to learn the laws of Shan. But that might be the smartest. Honestly, I don't. I fail to see why this has to continue relating to Dean and other than collecting our pouches of gold. It doesn't yet. However, if this was merely something to gain our trust, or if he has another task for us, we won't know until we speak with him. I have known people who try to make it seem like they are a force for good, hiring people to do works of good and then make them their personal attack dogs. So if he does try to give us more missions, I would be wary. I agree. So, what should we tell the gnomish binder? I think we should say our pleasantries and head out. You assume she'll let us go that easily. We've saved her life. She owes us that. Learn her name and perhaps place of work. You never know when we might need to see them again. Right, right. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we should leave on bad terms, but I think we should get to our own business. Perhaps we will inform her that our intention is to question her attackers, and that we will be back with her with any information we find. I'll, I'll nod to that and say, yes. Such an offer could get us into her good graces, and perhaps she won't press the issue on who our informant is. Perhaps we can only know by trying. All right, I'm good to go. All right, Salvor, so yeah. what are you drinking? Well, poor Dude. Luca was paying. I couldn't have ordered the most expensive wine. Plus, nothing on this continent would compare to my homeland. Oh, really? If I could taste it the same. You will have to try. Something from one of my favorite vineyards. Perhaps I promise when there you. are less pressing Pleasure. issues. Of course. Mysterious. I've never known an elf to be so impatient. There is someone trying to frame our compatriot's house to do evil deeds that cannot be set and let happen. But we should put all of our effort into stopping it, unless you need to rest. Upon him saying that, I I nod and just get up and walk out of the the tavern toward the hospital. Okay. So as you guys are... (laughs) As you guys are making your way back towards the hospital, one of the things that I want to uh, make clear, in case uh, it's not entirely known, once again, the first three sessions are going to have to roll in a lot of world-like backstory. Um... The characters that would know this are definitely Odette and um, and uh, Luca. Um, Stalbor and uh, Reich, please both roll for me a um, history with disadvantage. But then I'm going to throw stuff out there for everybody to hear it anyway, so we understand this world a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's disadvantage, okay? Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's see. Reich would know this, and uh, Stalbor would not. So what is it that you know? What is it you don't know? You see, um, this is a gnomish binder. What does that mean, a gnomish binder? Um, as we've said a bunch of times, there are um, uh, airships 
that fly through the air, controlled by House Delirandar. Uh, uh, um, there are locomotives that move bound by other uh, elemental creatures. There's also things like um, uh, sleds that are able to uh, travel on or through the ground. There's ones with water. Uh, elemental power that's able to travel through the water and whatnot. You see, uh, the way that this is able to be done is it was the gnomish binders of the country Zalargo, it's another country, uh, the gnomish binders of Zalargo that belong to no house whatsoever are the ones that discovered the secret, the ability to take elemental power and bind it to dragon shards. There's three different types of dragon shards, that's some other time. One of the types of dragon shards is called a kyber shard. So these kyber shards, not to be confused with the ones from Star Wars, are are the um are able to have elemental power bound to them and they do this to take like huge amounts of elemental power and power an airship with this huge ring of of air energy that holds it suspended in the air pushes it forwards backwards gives it some maneuverability so on and so forth but this also they have the ability to bind it in much smaller stones uh, and use those stones to make other things so it's not uncommon to have um Magic items not just use your your typical like oh like that's uh, the the what's the thing called uh, stretcher that you just saw carry the uh, injured noble woman um, into this facility sure that had like a Tasha's uh, floating disc was what was put yeah yeah it goes beyond just that it's also just raw elemental <coughs> power it doesn't necessarily have to replicate another spell so you'll see that on various types of magic items whether it be weapons armor wands or otherwise so. Um, these uh, kyber shards are the way that they do that. It's the gnomish binders that are ones that have unlocked the secret and have the ability to do so. Um, these gnomes that have this ability, this like lost magic, is not um, uh, not lost magic, but secret magic is not to be shared with any of the houses. So it it, it forces this like symbiotic relationship or this give and take relationship between um, these gnomes and the houses that require it, whether they be weapons for Luca or um, uh, lightning rails for Odette and so on. Um, that's where her value comes from. That understood, let's move on. So you guys make your way back up to the hospital and as you do so you can see that the uh, gnome is still inside the, the room where her friend was. However, when you guys walk in, the woman that you would tip beforehand or, or toss the money to beforehand says to you, hey, yeah, I can um, I can give you a... Uh, uh, you can go into that room now. She's stable. Everything's taken care of. Feel free to go into that room and, and see how she's doing. Okay. And I will walk in the room. Okay. So you guys do that. You go walking into the, the, the room and you see that the woman is lying inside a hospital bed. Uh, she's being dressed up well and um, has, you know, like a nice linens on her and stuff like that. Uh, her clothing has been changed. So she's been dressed in like uh, hospital clothes. Um, you can see like her face, the one that have been cleaned from whatever blood was on it or dirt was on it or whatever. And she's asleep, but seems perfectly fine. And um, sitting in a chair next to the bed is the gnomish woman that you had encountered beforehand, whose name that Odette was able to find out is Yosis. So Yosis yep. is sitting there in the chair. As you guys come walking in, um, she gives like a little squeeze to her friend's hand, and then she'll hop up off the chair and look up to you guys and say, I'm... I things were a little uh, confusing before. Um, it was just chaotic. I don't think I ever really said thank you, and and so I'd like to say that now. Thank you for for what you did. Thank you for saving us. I I do appreciate it. I'm glad we could help. Um, and thank you for sticking around to make sure that my friend was okay, and she is. Um, uh, kind of like looking at you guys, assuming that you had worried looks in your eyes, whether or not you actually did, she assumes you do. Um, is there, I mean, I, I no longer need your, your services and, and again, thank you so much, but I, I do have to ask, why are you here? I mean, I know you found out that something was happening, but are you just, I well, suppose, adventurers or heroes or folk? I, I, I mean... Well, we're here now to make sure that you are safe, and we want to inform you that it is now our intention to go question the goblins who attacked you and try to find out more, and we would let you know what we discover, of course, and just want to pass that information on to you. Our companion speaks goblin, so 
while we're here, we're in a advantageous point to help more. Well, I, I appreciate it. Um, I, I would like to say thank you for, for what it is that you've, you've done. Um, if, if you, if you would, I, I just, I'm kind of at a, a disadvantage at the moment. Um, maybe we can meet up again in, in a few days' time, so I can I can properly thank you. That sounds wonderful. Where Will you would be we in be Charn? able to find you? Um, don't worry about finding me. Um, I, I'm I'm sure I'll be able to find you. Uh, looking directly to both Odette and Luca. Uh, what were your names? I'm sorry. Uh, oh. Luke. Luca will just like look up and say Luca de Denise. And, and Odette de Ryan. Odette, that's what you had said. Odette and Luca. I'm I will remember those names and I'm, I'm sure you can reach out to the to the others. Uh, which I, I don't mean to be rude to you. I just know it might be a little bit harder to find you. Please, uh, if you'd like to say your names, I'm I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I, I, it, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Stable replies in a string of elvish. Uh, that sounds like some sort of sort of almost like weird honorable pseudo religious type thing. And she will um, respond in Elvish, saying, "It's a pleasure to meet you." <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's her, good. Her <laughs> Elvish is her Elvish is not not very strong for Corbarian Elvish, which is a bastardized dialect of the Elvish that you generally speak. But nonetheless, gets the gist. Gets yep. the name. Yep. <laughs> And she looks to Reich. I, I literally sit there for like uh, a good ten uncomfortable seconds before I just say, <laughs> Reich. Again, it's a pleasure to meet all of you, and I don't feel like you have to stay around here any longer. We're, we'll be fine. We're being watched over after the house, and, and we have people on their way to collect us in the morning, so we will be fine. Thank you again so much, and, and may the host, may the host watch over you. Yeah, uh, Luca, Luca, Luca leaves. <laughs> yeah, Luca nods oh, like very respectfully and follows Starbor. Um, the host is a reference to the primary faith here, which is called the Sovereign Host. It's uh, yeah. comprised of uh, a few different deities. Um, mm -hmm. So the Sovereign Host is like the neutral to good alliance um, pantheon of gods that's very commonly worshipped in in this world. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So next, is, you guys uh, make your way out of there. Where is it that you head? Where do you, where do you go? What do you do? Um, I guess when we leave, Luke will say, I think questioning our enemies is a great idea. However, I think we should report back to Dane first. I agree. We have a few days time, I think. Why do we need to tell that canker blossom anything? Don't you want your hundred gold? And he kind of look, looks you up and down. <laughs> Surely this also, should be more than just gold to you. Yeah, it absolutely is, but you're the one who seemed to be pressing about we are hired for a cost. You are correct. I want to know if he truly is just going to give us our gold and be on his way, or if this was a ploy for something else on his part. I, I agree it is a great chance to determine his character. You make very good points. I recant my dissent. Uh, Luca nods and then looks over at Odette and says, Ride? Oh, you want me to be the delivery boy? Oh, well, I mean, I figured I'll take care of battles. Of course, you take care I will of, secure passage. You take care of rides. You fell asleep before the most exciting part. That's because I was doing work for the two of us. Menial work. He took grievous injuries in the protection of that woman. That should not be a so, laughable so you, situation. You can see. So, all right. So, you actually, did well in battle. Funny. You, you, you can did see well that battle. that Luca is 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 having these quips with you, but not ill intended. Kind mm -hmm. of like, totally like broing out like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I and, did work. And the Salvor's um, and the Salvor's come. I will nod and say he did well in battle. Uh, you, you see that from, from Mora's house. So you see that look like, oh, geez, she finally approves of something I did. So <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, oh, okay, she doesn't hate me. 
And and I'm just like I so I I just nod to that and say, right. <laughs> You do have the contact. I will secure us passage. I, I, I like, smile and, like, give me, like, a, a nice big nod. Like, yeah, that sounds great. Ballbuster. <sighs> <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Um, so you do secure passage. It's not a problem. And you're able to make your way to the um, uh, to where it was that you had spoken with Dane before. So you go in to meet up with uh, – you go to go get back into the facility. The place has now been emptied and closed. And as soon as you go into uh, up to the place, the the doors are locked. It's kind of like one of those uh, the doors are locked or whatever, whatnot. So you go up to it, you immediately try the handle, can't get in. Uh, what do you try to do? You try to like knock or something like so, that. So is there is there a and I don't mean to plug myself. Is there a will call window? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I walk up to that window. Mm -hmm. There's no there's nobody um, there's nobody there. Oh, there's nobody there. No. Okay. Um, upon seeing that there's nobody there, I'll turn and look like we really didn't find out where to find this guy, did we? I look at you guys and I say, he is. If, if this was some elaborate hoax to get us back to a stupid show, I'd be pissed. <laughs> Scott, uh, how, would, how would I send a message to this man? I mean, it's With very likely, it's very likely there's still people inside this facility. Ugh. All right. Luca does it. He goes up, and he knocks. Wow, that was that was super impressive. Oh. So uh, <laughs> after a few moments, somebody comes over and opens the door, and they're like, um, "Excuse me, we're we're closed for the evening." This is um, an Boom. elf. Oh, this, this is of course an Boom. elf that's standing there. Excuse me, we're we're closed for the evening. Inform Deanda that we have arrived. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that he would um, care either way. If if you're friends of his, perhaps you should contact him through the proper channels or uh, whatever the case may be. But I, I'm sorry, I'm not his message boy. Um, we are closed, and I do wish you the... So I'll interrupt and say, is he here? I am, again, not his message boy, so you're you're going to have to... Good day to you, and I, I hope you, um, could you uh, stay safe us tonight. A message boy? What? Well, I would. Could you procure us a message boy? Someone to pass <laughs> along. <laughs> I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm also not here to procure message boys one way or the other. Yeah. I, I we are closed now. Thank you. When when okay. he closes the door, when... I want to try to like put my foot in the door, <laughs> like like prevent him from closing the door. You do prevent him from closing the door. <laughs> I'm <gonna pull> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna pull out two gold and, I'm, and, and shake my hand, and I walk over to him. I said, "For this, will you oh. deliver a message?" I'm no. I kind of shake my head. I'm I'm not going to be your. And he kind of like looks you down and back up again. I'm not going to be your message boy. That's not what. If you want a message boy, perhaps you should turn to somebody that's more adequate in that that field. And he like, kind of like throws a disdain look at Odette, and then he's like, and. You can take your foot out of my door, soldier. Saying that well, to to Luca, and take your take your things with you as well. What is so? What does he look like? He's an elf, and he's elf. Dre he's dressed well, just like everybody else seems to work here is. Probably he's one of the stewards, right? He's an elf that dresses well. I just I want to just open the door and walk in past him. Just so you're gonna man. you're gonna break an entry. Please don't uh, do this. Don't do this. I mean, no, you, don't, I, so you try to do that, and Stalbor grabs the, the the sort of back of your breastplate and and doesn't really have enough force to hold you, but probably because you lifted I, one foot off the ground, I, like actually jerks you back. It's like, yeah, do not worry about this gentleman. He brings enough dishonor to his family, and he's actually talking about the the steward. We uh, will be on our way, and we will find this gentleman without your assistance. But if we ever return, I will make utmost certainty to report your disappointing performance to your superiors. And then turns and starts walking away. Good day. I say nothing to that, and I let him close the door. Uh, I turn around to, to Stalbor and say, like, I, I kind of, like, assess the situation looking at everyone, like, oh, maybe that wasn't the, the smartest thing to do. I was just acting in the moment. Uh, it seems that Dane oh. Dale Deander does not live in the concert hall. 
That would make sense, but he didn't give us anywhere else to meet him. Um, could you guys He's make a somebody... celebrity? Could you guys make me a perception check? Where does he saying um, he is a celebrity? Perception. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fives for Nate. No, okay, we got an 11. Is Eric going to roll correctly? Mean? No. So uh, it's actually it's going to be both uh, Reich and um, Stalbor that notices. That all of a sudden, like, because uh, somebody who's walking by, which you wouldn't think anything of, is getting a bit late. But somebody who's walking by, you're in a, a busy city, so this isn't abnormal. Uh, but as they're walking by, they accidentally brush uh, past Odette a little bit. But immediately as they brush past Odette, both of you guys notice they reach into Odette's purse and grab a handful of coins. And they, uh, and because, like, you notice this and he notices you noticing them, what, what, however you react, mm -hmm. it's up to you. He immediately starts booking it as quickly as he can. This is a, a young boy, maybe human, maybe half-elf. Uh, you can't quite tell, but a young person. Okay. Um, I would Stop make chase fucking after. runs. <laughs> okay. Fucking chases, yeah. You guys start running? Drool's, uh, yeah. Okay. So, do we see them running and, like, Luca and I just exchange a look like what happened? Yeah, yes. I, I think I that's so. exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. And you see, like them chasing this little boy. That's like so. <laughs> upon, upon this look, I like take like two steps very quickly, and then like I, I turn it into a very light jog. I'm not like rushing after them, but I'm trying to keep up with them from behind. Okay. Oh, Jet. I mean, I'll follow. So you don't just you know catch up to the boy. I'm pretty fast. I don't move 40 feet. Yeah, but you don't move 150 uh, feet. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I will cast Expedition Tree and immediately catch up with him. Okay. So all of a sudden, like, everybody's kind of jogging. Uh, Reich is very quickly closing in. Uh, Stalbor got a stitch in his side chasing afterwards because, you know, he's a scrawny <laughs> little thing. Uh, Luca's kind of jogging next to I'm Stalbor. Fast. Uh, Thank you. jogging next to Stalbor, but you know, with all of his armor and everything on him, easily keeping pace at Stalbor, who's got a stitch in his side, uh, right ahead of you guys. And all of a sudden, uh, hanging back for a moment is Odette, like, uh, she does something, and all of a sudden, she's way ahead of you guys. She just flies past you guys, runs in front of the, uh, the person running as well, and, um, <laughs> and goes to, like, cut him off. And as she goes to cut him off, he immediately turns, like, a hard turn and runs down an alleyway. Uh, you guys continue the pursuit after him. Everybody roll for me an acrobatics check, except for Odette. You can roll for me with advantage. If I'm in a blade song, I already get advantage. Is that yeah. why I said Good. for you to roll with advantage, do you think? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I wasn't the stitch in my side. The book is tied very tightly to my midriff. Are you kidding me right now? Everybody extra. look at these rolls. Look at these rolls. Yeah. yeah. Look at look at Erin. Look at her. I know. <laughs> She's Darn so much gosh. faster than everybody. Charn is a gross city. It's very slick. Yeah, you don't know the alleyways like I know the alleyways. So, I don't. So he goes darting down <laughs> the alleyway, but it's here. not just down one alleyway. He's cutting back and forth through a bunch of them, and everybody's able to keep pace except for Odette. Odette is running really fast and goes to cut him off, and as she goes to cut him off, all of a sudden she realizes he's not there. He took another turn, and she has to come running back down and turn back to follow after where everybody else just turns, runs ahead and makes the same mistake probably two times, nothing ridiculous, before she She's like, um, oh, hey, what's up, Frank? Hi. Um, before she makes the, the uh, is it finally able to kind of like catch up to him, but after everybody else does, everybody is um, rushing uh, to chase after this boy. He finally makes his way over to a wall and literally starts climbing up the wall. All of you guys were able to catch up to him. So as he's climbing the wall, you are all immediately right there. Actually, because of how tall you are and it's because of the role that you made there, Reich, you can literally reach up and grab his foot if you want to, and if you yeah. fail to do so, you could probably um, um, uh, acrobatic, sorry, uh, athletics to climb up after him. What would I roll to try to catch his foot? Um, to catch his foot, just be athletics check, please, and thank you. Athletics. L listen, what can I say? Funny Brits are a are a um, hard to get your hand on commodity, so I'm sorry that I may have stole stole him from you, but they're known for terrible senses of humor. And, and we found a funny one. And so, Frank, we, we took him. He's ours. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if it's terrible so much as dry. Yeah, this is going to sound weird. Very British humor if, very if, you want, if you want, like, typical British dry humor, look up clips from the show Toast of London. 
it's the driest humor in the world. I, I kind of yeah, love I, it because I actually love British humor. I've so. actually I've actually watched it. It's solid. I, I like it's dry British humor. It's It's so. the driest thing. Yeah, it is. Oh. It is good, Scott. You would oh. like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, check it out. That's funny. All right. So anyway, well, this, this is hilarious. Everybody's sitting here like I want Ollie. So this is sadly this. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, um, for, in Twitch chat, there's a bunch of people talking about how they love Ollie and Ollie's amazing. Mm. The rest of us think he's garbage, but you know, what can I say? We got him. So, uh, Eric, with your <laughs> athletics check of 17, as he's climbing up there, just again, because you're so tall, you're like six and a half feet tall, you reach up, or, or how tall are you exactly? I am six foot six. Six and a half feet tall, you reach up and you grab his ankle, and he's like almost out of your reach, and you hold on to it. Do you yank him down or just stop him from going up any further? I would yank him down. Okay, that's going to be well, a... Well, we would call it gentle You, you yank him down, I actually, like, as you do that, like, for amazingly trusting you to do this, like... Um, just sort of put my hand against the wall so beside this guy's head and just glare at him. And then he probably like sees my face and maybe thinks twice about his choices. Yep. So so he gets pulled down and so like this this like slides down and kind of like scrapes his hands and probably his shoulder a little bit on the way down. It kind of flops down and as he like stands up and kind of looks around back and forth, already back and forth. He sees again Stalbor, who's also incredibly tall, looking down at him. Uh, at this point in time, immediately Stalbor is able to identify the fact that he is a younger half elf. He's probably in his early teens or, or so as a half elf, and he's standing there. He's kind of looking shocked for a second. He's like, <sighs> and then finally Odette comes rushing in to to where everybody else is because she rolled horribly. Uh, very quickly, she comes rushing in, and he he hands the coins, just holds his coins out to her. That he like his uh, closed fist to her. Hold up my hand and grab it from him. And you would do well to re-decide on your life choices. Um, no, I, I, I was sent here to, to get you. Speak quickly. Um, up there. And uh, he points up and uh, for the, all of you guys look up and you can see that there's a balcony uh, overhead. You'd have to climb up a, a decent amount to get to it. But there is a balcony that's overhead. Uh, is there anyone on the balcony, or is it just no. the balcony? I mean, you can't see because you're standing underneath the lip of the balcony, so you wouldn't be able to see either way, but there's a balcony if right If your in. intent is to be a messenger as a future career, you might want to rethink your methods, because if you made it much further, no. I would have sucked very life from your body. Oh, um... I you should I, probably I, I, decide I, not to steal in the future no no i was i, I was told i was told this. that i was told this is the best way to do it so like nobody knew that you were you were told wrong uh, but but no, nobody was supposed to know that you that you so, were following me because i was he, like a messenger yeah, i was yeah, i was told to like, do this Elbor is like sort of walking around the structure trying to find a, a door now yeah i kind of like poke the kid in the back i'm just like oh. like yeah like bring us bring us where we need to go then i did to the to yeah. the entrance. We need to go. No, we Forget to go about up. him. He, he, he like he, he gestures up. Line. He's like, th this is the entrance. <laughs> I'm All not right. climbing up a wall. So then, so. so then I say, then get up there, and I, I wait to watch what he does. Yes, get up there and throw us a rope down, you little street urchin. Well, <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> have. Thank him. you, by the way, for sending for us. You're welcome. Uh, and he looks kind of perplexed, and he's like, um. I, I don't have a rope. Do one of you have a rope for me to throw it down for you? I'm not giving you my rope. I just I'm say... Gonna... I, I say get up there. A... I'm going to climb up. Because <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't need this guy to show me how to go. What would be the climb up there myself? <laughs> Athletic like, check, The rest of us are too proud. And he's like, well, I can climb a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you start scaling the, you scale the side of it and you get over to like where it gets the tricky part so you get up to the top and now you're underneath the the balcony itself and like i said here is where it's kind of a, this through here's where it's kind of a tricky part and how it's going to be able to get up there can you do me a favor roll me a perception check i believe i believe i believe that we will win and with your perception of 12, you can actually see that there's little handholds um, that allow you to kind of like make your way across the balcony, almost like monkey bars. Uh, they, they blend in somewhat, but from this, where you are right now, the fact that you have dark vision, you can actually see them the, in, in the night. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you start making your handholds, uh, your like monkey bar your way across, and when you get over, you kind of like grab 
uh, the lip of the, the ledge mm -hmm. and kind of dangle for a moment. And we'll stop with you dangling there. Um, next is going to be who? I still I still want to poke the kid, like, get up there. Oh, I, okay, I, I guess. I mean, <laughs> sure. And so he, he goes and Poor starts, kid. he starts climbing up the, the ledge as well. And he, like, he's foot slips uh, once as he's going and he gets to the top where it's like monkey bars and he's like reaching. Mind you, this kid's like 13. So he's like, yep. he's like reaching out to try to grab like where the, the first monkey bar thing is. And he grabs it and like he falls and he's barely holding on to like where that first monkey bar is. And at this point in time, he's like 25 feet up. And so he like looks down. It's one of those like very scared looks. Now, Reich, because his arms are so long, he's kind of like dangling below the lip and he can see the kid straight on. Like the kid does not look very happy at the moment. He literally looks like he's, he thinks he's going to die. And so he's like, ah, uh -huh. let me make a check real quick to see what happens. I want to get below him to try to catch yeah, him. Yeah, I'll also I, probably bash to catch him. He, he, but... His fingers are strong enough to hold on. And he pulls himself up and grabs it. And then he starts making his way across and over to where Reich is. But Reich's now in the way. So, Reich, make me an athletics check. It's a pretty low DC to pull yourself up. Everyone's watching. Yeah. And you're good. You pull yourself up and onto the ledge. The kid makes his way over, and he's also going to start doing it. Does anybody else start following? I'm gonna, I'm gonna help try to help him up. No, oh, good, thank here. God you helped him up because as he's going yeah, over, he's trying literally... to, he's like literally he's like slipping, and as he's trying to get his leg, he literally starts to slip, and, and he's barely just catch him. Yeah, and, and hoist Pull him back up. up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luca's gonna follow the exact route that uh, Reich took, mm -hmm. and he's just gonna to climb the wall rather quickly. Okay, roll me a five. I'm gonna turn to Odette and and uh, Stalbos, and like, we should find a door. We should find a door. And then. <laughs> Look around the building. <laughs> so, so, um, can you just make me one more athletics check to finish that? Because you did the first one to get all the way to the lip, and then the last one. Sure. Yeah, would that help? And and all? you guys easily, you easily find your way up there. So, uh, <laughs> like, you're the first one up there, and you kind of turn around, you look, and you can see that this seems to be a very comfortable uh, looking place. Like, you turn around, and this is a balcony that leads into. There's like a door in the way or whatever, but there's some big glass windows that leads to a very comfortable looking room. But one of the things that stands out the most to you is because you was only here earlier this evening is the colors. The colors stand out incredibly so. These are the same colors as the playhouse that you were in uh, earlier this evening. And when Luca climbs himself up and looks around, you can also see that you're, these are the colors of the playhouse that was up here uh, earlier this evening. So I'm going to pull the camera from the two of you for a second down to Odette and Stalbor. The two of you are starting to walk around and try to find a door into this facility. Could you roll me an investigation check, please? Um, because you're both doing it, whoever's better of the two of you may roll with advantage. I have, I have a five. A plus three, so I will give you advantage. Advantage. Oh, look at that. And after spending a few minutes, uh, like probably a minute or so looking around and trying to find an entrance, it's you realize... It's almost like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, so as you go walking around trying to find your entrance, you do in fact find the entrance to the place. It's the one you were just shooting from. Ah. Uh. Oh, bitch. Walking around a little bit further, because you got a 20, you do find another entrance, but it's a backdoor entrance where, like, they usually bring the garbage out and stuff like that. Let's be garbage. Yep. I try to see if the door's... Better than climbing uh, in a dress. It's locked. So upon upon seeing that like these colors are like this is this seems like where I need to be, I'm just gonna call out a debt. Uh, they've actually walked away. We we are right. I, I, we probably know you have other side of the building. Like I, I I call it pretty you can loudly. Look down and not I see just don't know. Hmm. All if right. You call, if you call it that loudly, I'm gonna elbow you and just look at you for a moment. I look back at him like, what? like what and. Just, Look down you to see live if in they the lower rings, right? Do you have means to Ouch. open this? <laughs> Northern racism. <laughs> no, that's Feel altitude like racism. No? Sorry. I'm gonna go approach the where the room has got. Okay. Uh, you go to the door, and um, do you like look inside the window, or do you immediately go into the door? I would just go into the door. Okay. Well, actually, I would. I would actually try to peer through the window. Roll me a perception break. check, really quickly. Luca is still standing on the balcony, wondering with his hurt ribs why it was that you had jabbed him. Like what? Yeah, yeah. Like what the? And I like look back over the balcony. Like where, where are they? Mia, yeah, this gun, this gun. <laughs> with your 16, you can see that uh, lounging out, lying on a on a couch, like his legs up, um, enjoying probably some music or whatever it is that you can't hear it from where you are. Uh, happens to be a particular half elf 
um, sitting there and smoking no, from a hookah. I look at I look at um, would, wouldn't he? <laughs> I look at uh, I look at Will's character and I say, he's inside. I'll 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 nod like I'll like turn around from the balcony and be like oh, and I'll nod at him and I'll I'll turn to the messenger, um, go tell our friends to get up here, and I'll I'll hand him my rope. Uh, and then I, I turn back and uh, knock on the glass. Before you knock on the glass, he goes, If I dangle rope from this balcony, wouldn't it be a little bit suspicious? Right. That's why I want you to go, like, give it to them and then help them back up. How? Am I, cli I, am I climbing down with the rope and then handing them the rope to get back up here? No, you are climbing down with the okay. rope, finding them. Yeah. And then coming back up here. Yeah. Tying the rope off. I have to climb back up here climb. again? I, was still like, <laughs> I, I just like nod at him like, yeah, kid. Like, 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 it. like it's not a big thing of, I'm not asking a big thing of him, but he seems like I'm asking the world of him. But I'm like, yeah. Like. <sighs> I, I, I would look at, uh, look at Luca, look at the kid. I'm going to grab the rope from the kid. I'm going to grab the rope from the kid. I'm going to say. Get, I'll get you an autograph. So you take the rope from him? Yeah, I'm going to say. Go find our friends and tell them to come back here. And you just kind of like you just kind of like dangle the rope for him to climb down. Yeah. Okay. And he climbs back down, and he'll go and find you guys, and he'll kind of come up to you and be like, "At this point, it's like I am not going to break into a building. This is not who I am. I don't know. I, I thought we were having quite a friendly rapport, but obviously, I made the wrong choices about you. I am not some." <laughs> I don't know what you thought I was. We're giving an existential My crisis apologies. to this character. I, I shouldn't have assumed that. That was wrong of me. <laughs> um, you should not assume my credible status. Some elves I may look bear, like a criminal. Um, are very good at, at, you know, with their nimble fingers. Breaking into things. <laughs> I shouldn't have assumed that of you. I apologize. Wow. Okay, I kind of, like, look off awkwardly. <laughs> awesome. So he makes his way around, and he's like, like he's like, Psst, 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 hey, red. hey, um, come on, we're already losing the discretion of what we were supposed to be doing, let's go, let's go. Why does something like this need discretion, why am I taking instruction from a child, he's following, he's just like, yeah. actually, <laughs> do you know who you remind me of? Did any of you guys ever play Baldur's Gate? Just raise a hand if you play Baldur's Gate. Aaron, Eric, and that's it. So Will and Stalbor did it. So there's a character, and he's an elven character. His name's Zan, and he's very much. Uh, I think I, I don't think he's a necromancer. I think he's an abjurer or something like that. Anyways, he is. Life is so boring. Like he's very much like like oh, life just seems to last forever. Like it, it's it's Stalbor very much like embodies this character for me. And it's awesome. He's like one of my favorite NPCs. He's so much fun. But anyways, so. Um, you're, following, you're grumbling while following after him, and so he goes over to the ledge, and without climbing up, he picks up a couple of rocks and starts throwing them up there to, to get Reich's attention. I'm just going to throw the, the rope down at that point. As you throw the rope down, all of a sudden, make me a perception check, uh, Stalbor and Odette, and Reich. As I clap, like I'm trying to pronounce my syllables. I feel like I'm back in middle school. I rolled with advantage, and I shouldn't have. My, my apologies. You, you, you should not have. You were correct. I know. Well, I see. Oh! Oh, jeez! You have to go Nothing! Oh, fail! Jeez! I'm obviously going to have to tell Odette what oh, I see. Oh, one extreme to the next! So it's funny because all of a sudden, um, as you throw the rope down, the little boy reaches to grab for it because he's supposed to. And all of a sudden, he like, looks over his shoulder, and, and uh, Salvador heard the same thing. And he looks over his shoulder, too, and sees that there's uh, that there's somebody coming around the corner. And the kid books it. He just starts running it as fast as he can. And Odette does not, is completely not aware of this whatsoever and probably reacts to the fact that this kid's booking it without being aware. Uh, Reich, you actually got a little bit uh, lower of a DC than them because you're standing so high up and looking down. And so you actually are able to see from on top of the ledge as well that it looks like a city guard is coming around this corner as well. Um, Odette, your back is to the guard, reacts to the fact that the child was grabbing for the rope and all of a sudden turned and booked it as fast as he could. Uh, where, where is he going? I'm going to pull the rope. Did he steal from us again? Hey, what's what, what's going what's going on over here? 
uh, as uh, a man dressed in armor come, comes around the corner. He's a city guard. He has a pike in one hand, a shield and uh, sword that are both put away. But again, a pike in one hand, wearing breastplate that shows the um, the insignia of, like, Sharn Guard. And he's making his way around. What's going on over here? What? What is this? And he's like looking up to the fact that there's a rope dangling now from the balcony because like so much time has passed and everything. He's like, w what is this? Well, you see, my friend, my friend lives in this building. His door <laughs> is being locked due to some disagreements with his landlord. And this is the only way up into his house to give him the supplies that he so dearly needs, my friend. And I'm very sorry. I'm sure this goes against the building regulations. But in a city such as this, the landlords get away with so, so much. I can speak for the truth of that. I mean, look at me. No one wants to give me good rent. <laughs> Roll me a uh, persuade deception <laughs> with disadvantage. With disadvantage. Oh god, it's awesome. Oh, he's so so. You you roll your seventeen with disadvantage. You roll your seventeen total, and he's like, I I thought this was the the pyrohydras. Is it the balcony to the pyrohydra suite? Yes. Oh. They have private rooms. <laughs> and the disagreements with the landlord of, of this place? Look, you know the kind of people that have to stay here, right? They are terribly disagreeable. Can you imagine that someone could anger the people in charge? Probably just by eating the wrong kind of bonbon. Uh, he, he actually will laugh to that. <laughs> Um, yes, but perhaps there's a different way that you could go about getting in. You wish. Oh, I thought oh, so too. Tried. <laughs> I agree. We agree. She can't climb a rope in such a dress without Absolutely using some decency. Not. I want to believe you, but you're going to have to come with me. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. And so he, he expects to have the two of you walk away. He didn't look up. He looked up and didn't see Rike up there. And Luca's way out of sight. So he does say, the two of you are going to come with me. If, if you're telling the truth, we'll find out. Okay, we'll go through the front door. Stabble does not even slightly object. And he, do, he looks back to Odette to check that she's following. Like, expecting mm -hmm. that she should be. This mm -hmm. is the boar. And then um, uh, follows quite happily. Okay. And so the two of you go walking around with the guards to see what's happening in there. Mm -hmm. And um, the other two of you kind of see that happen. And <laughs> how do you react? I'm going to go inside. I, I'm still trying to knock on the window, like, to get the elf's attention. You don't get his attention at all. I'm no. just going to go in. Yeah, I'm going to follow Reich's lead and just enter. So when you guys follow Reich's lead and you enter, uh, as soon as you enter, you see that uh, it's literally like you saw him. He was lying on the couch smoking the hookah. And uh, when you guys walk in, you can see the hookah still burning. But uh, we're talking, it's a matter of a second and a half or so from when you saw him through the window and you walked in the door and he's no longer on the couch. And so he's across the room and he's uh, sitting there and he's sipping a, a glass of wine uh, over by a table. Uh, one of his hands on the table, sitting the glass of wine, the other one underneath the table. And he's like, oh, you've made it. That's that's good, I'm glad to hear it. Um, uh, come on in, come on in. We have we have things that we need to talk about. Uh, you 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 did it, right? You 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 beat, I know you beat it. I, I knew I chose the right people. You did a wonderful job. You defeated them, and you There's saved a guard that. Uh... Up here. What? There's a guard coming up here. Why? <laughs> Our friends. They were trying to come up in your inventive way. And wait, a guard is coming. He's going to alert them of what's going on. Who? Shit! No, no. You were just supposed to follow the boy. Ah, oh, I thought you were taking to. a long time. Oh no. Um. Okay. This is not good. They're gonna realize. I'm gonna have to up my scale. We have to up the time scale. Um. What? Um. Yeah. Oh no. Uh. This is not good. Um. Uh. Odette, is she with you or is she with the guard? She is with the guard. No. Oh, she was the passage. Um. Okay. Uh. All right. So I new plan, I guess. Um. But before they go in, oh, you need to get them. You need to get them and have them meet with us over near the station, over near the lightning rail station. We need to go. First train out of here. I'll grab a few things. Um, 
Uh, They're coming Luca, up now. No, Luca, you, Luca, Luca, you stay with me and Reek. You go and you go and stop them. Don't let them go back around and do something. Do something. I need to get some stuff. Luca, help me get some stuff. And like he starts frantically like running around and trying to grab a few things and like throw them inside like suitcases. Do Do I notice like he's just grabbing clothes and stuff to just travel? It looks as though he's grabbing things to, to you. It does not look like they're important. I, I, I like, like, I don't, like, not help him. I, I help the best I can, but I don't know what's important to him. I don't know what. So I'm just like, nice. uh, If you go to help this. him, like, that chest there. Get get all the clothing from that chest there, okay? And just yeah. make sure you get everything from so there. I just kind of, like, dumbfoundedly, like, go to the chest, like, all right. And I start picking it up and, like, bringing it to what he needs, like, where okay. wherever he's packing. Dumping the stuff into, like, uh, suitcases yeah, or whatever? Yeah, just, like... Okay. Yeah. The, these suitcases, they're not quite as ridiculous as Mary Poppins, but there's definitely more space in them than you would typically expect. So if you're if if it's a suitcase like you would normally think for like travel, that's like a good, you know, a good size or whatever, it holds probably double that amount, but nothing like super crazy or ridiculous. So you can actually empty the whole chest into one suitcase. Uh Reich, what do you do? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna head he he wants me to head back down. Yeah. Um, there's a rope I'm, thing. I'm there's a rope that you can have dangling there if you want. You don't have to. I'm gonna head. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna head down the rope. Okay, so you're gonna tie off the rope and leave the rope behind. Yep. Okay. So you do that and you head down. Uh, super easy athletics check. Super super easy. You pass, no problem. And you climb back down and you start making your way around. Uh, I imagine you're trying to be quiet and quick. Yes. Roll me a, uh, a stealth check. If you want to be really quick, roll me with a disadvantage. Hold on one second. The reload. Re yeah, roll 20. It wasn't let me click on anything. All right. I think it's funny you have to click like 30 times to make something go every time. So you're doing a normal stealthy check, not moving super quick. Yes. So you're making your way around the corner and whatnot. Uh, and as you're making your way around the corner, it's already a little too late. They've already walked around the door and it's knocked on the front door. And we're actually going to call it right here with you knocking on that, with them knocking on that front door and the person that you were with beforehand uh, opening the door and being like, what now? Um, uh, the, the same elf as before. So that's where we're going to call it for this session. What the hell is going on? Why is Dane trying to be secretive? Why was he trying to sneak you guys up in there? Apparently you got caught along the way. What is going on? You have no clue. Um, so with that being the end of what we're doing right now, why don't we, um, um, why don't you guys, uh, you know, tell me where can we, where can we find you? What can we do? Uh, let's start off with, um, Erin or Rinson. What's up? Sure. You can find me on Twitter at Rinson, uh, with two N's and Sin. Um, I recently found it to be a great place to post pictures of my new puppy and all the horrible little bow ties I make her wear. Um, and Reddit and Simple Baking. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Ollie, where can we find you and your wonderful artwork? Oh, so many places, Scott. Uh, basically everywhere at Ollie Smith Art or at Ollie Rant uh, on Twitter when I'm not on holiday, which I am at the moment. I try to do daily art, but if you'd like the art, you can always pay me money on Patreon. You can see the behind the scenes. You can keep the stuff, but it's, oh, it's so good. I draw <laughs> stuff. Apparently, I might be on Frank's stream now as well. I have no idea. Yeah, apparently, yes. apparently Strang, uh, Frank and Kath are both trying to grab you. Apparently, Tantus is trying to grab you, but he's mine. Tantus has been trying to grab me for ages. Ages. Um, awesome. And uh, Will, William, Will Call, what do you want to call yourself? Where can we find you, sir? What do you do for a living? Yes. So you could, well, for a living, I'm a chef. However, I'm trying to open a brewery, and you could find me on a. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, all the such, mainly Instagram, at Will Call Brewing. Uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Listen, if you want me to follow you on Twitter, you better start saying stuff. Because, like, right I now, mean, I don't. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta say something. You gotta be like, sup. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I respond to tweets I'm a part of, but I don't specifically tweet. <laughs> but, like I said, on Instagram, we have plenty of posts you can come check out. Absolutely. Beautiful. Kunsai, where can we find you, sir? What do you yeah, do man. for? What do you do? Why, how can people? Why would we want to bother you? Tell me. Why do you want to bother me? Because I 
I don't know, I retweet some stupid shit. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. I like memes, so you know, send those to me. I'm at KUNSAI64 on Twitter, and that's really the only place I'm active at all. So, you know, hit me up there. Um, all right, and hello, I am Derek. You have small channel, Derek Master, where I'm Dungeoning Dragons mastering a, 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 a little fun thing with some, some friends of mine or family of mine or whatever the relation I might have to these strange people is. Uh, you can also find me on Tuesday nights starting this week, uh, on Tuesday nights um, and Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash lostinitiativeshow. Uh, you can also have lostinitiative.com. And you can find me on Fridays before this stream. You can find me on Fridays over at Roll For It at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And this one is always 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. Um, it is a lot of fun. I, I'm actually really happy because like, I do a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, do a lot of streams or whatever with this. Uh, this is the fourth one I do in a week, uh, which is great. But um, this is one with like people that I've known for a long time, except for you know some that aren't important. With people that I've known for a long time, so I guess like you know it's it, it, it's fun because like I know exactly what they're gonna do before they do it, and I can manipulate them. So um, I mean, I mean, you might have no, no, known me all. for a long that's time, all. but I've only been playing D and D for a year, so <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually kind of sad that you're my brother and you've only been playing Dungeons and Dragons for a, a year. I mean, Sans that yeah. one time at my bachelor party when you played, because I played Dungeons and Dragons at my bachelor party. What about? <laughs> All right, he well, did, he did do that. Anyways, I'd like to say end. thank you all very much. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next week. We'll catch you next time. You can also find the stuff over at, um, I don't have a set URL yet, but if you find the link below and click on it, subscribe. Very soon I'll have my own link for uh, this stuff on YouTube too. All right, catch you guys later.